everyone, my name is Lei Hua and welcome to the Superfina channel where today we are reviewing the game Black Zone Tournament. Black Zone is available on Steam and the PlayStation 4 and this game is developed by Victory Lap Games. Black Zone is a modern take on competitive bomb throwing arena games. It's fast paced and it requires strategy. There is a solo mode where it has a lot of challenges where we can hone our skills and techniques. And there are multiplayer modes where we can play with up to 32 players. That's a lot in that little arena. It can be high stress level, especially when the game throws in some stuff that is dangerous for your character. On PC, you can either play with your mouse keyboard or a gamepad. With the gamepad, players can play with up to 8 people on the PC. I haven't experimented with that, but if you want me to check it out, let me know in the comments below. Players have the ability to customize their avatar, their character. When we first start playing, we're given a set of features. But when we are playing throughout the game, we're able to gain more by ranking up. Every time we rank up, we're able to get rewards, and these rewards are random. But if you want to get something specific, you can purchase that. This is the area where we get our rewards. Every time we rank up, we're able to do a slot randomization, and it will give us our rewards. Different features that we can put on our avatar. And on the bottom left side, you'll see that there is a section where we can purchase features. So let's get with gameplay. The way we play the game is we can move around in the arena. And then our character places a bomb. And after a few seconds, it explodes. Now the way it explodes is vertical and horizontal. So we do not want to be in range of when our bomb explodes. With certain icons, it will enable our bombs to explode much larger. It'll be able to have like a larger range in the vertical and horizontal way. When that happens, be warned. <laughs> you need to stay away from that range. If you are within that range, you're doing a suicide. Ultimate abilities will be available. One of these ultimate abilities is the kick. It'll be this little icon that has a boot making a kicking motion. Once your character acquires that, you'll be able to kick your bomb. You can kick it either horizontally or vertically. You must face that direction where you want your bomb to be kicked at. So if you're thinking about kicking the bombs towards like a vertical but your player is facing horizontal, it's not going to go vertical. No, 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 no. And it only stops when it hits something. So for example, if it hits a wall, it'll stop there. If it hits a hole, it'll stop right in front of that hole. It won't just fly over that hole if you're kicking the bomb towards a hole. It'll stop right in front of it. And the reason why I'm pointing these out is because what if the bomb has a larger range from all those par ups? Your character has to be away from that range. And if you kick the bomb in an area where it just stops and your player character is still in that range, it's gonna get a suicide. Another ultimate move we have is the punch ultimate. The punch ultimate is slightly different from the kick ultimate because when we're punching the bomb, it's actually like a punch and it goes like over things. So for example, what if our enemies are in this barrier wall and we want to throw or get a bomb to them? If we get that icon and get the punch ultimate, we can punt that bomb over that wall. But it can only be punched over a certain amount of squares. From there, you gotta think, okay, where am I? How far can I punch this bomb? Will it reach to that enemy and explode just in time? Because you gotta remember, it takes three seconds for the bombs to explode. The throw ultimate, an ability where a character can grab the bomb and throw it at a certain distance, about two or three squares away. 
this ability is similar to the punch ultimate where you can put that bomb at a certain distance in a certain spot and let it explode after 3 seconds. So with that in mind, we as the players need to know if that bomb is going to hit that right spot and explode and hit our enemy in time. Sometimes this can be a little difficult because our enemy can see it coming and just run away from it. So we gotta really think ahead with these ultimates. They're really great to utilize as long as we can think ahead and predict what's going to happen after the bomb lands in that certain area. And it's kind of hard to think that far ahead when it's like a high stress level with 32 other players in that multiplayer arena, who's going to think that far ahead when you're going to against all these other people and we got some obstacles going on and we got some hiccups hitting us. It's like, how? How are we supposed to think this much while in this high stress level game? Some of the arenas are going to have a jump pad. Jump pads are these pads that have green arrows on them. The green arrows indicate what direction our characters are going to jump towards. Some of them look alike, but it's just slightly subtle to the point where you think it's going to go this way, but it's actually going to go that way. These jump pads can be beneficial for us. For example, we leave a bomb in an area and then we use that jump pad to get away. Or we see our enemies going towards a certain direction. We go in the jump pad, jump towards that area, leave a bomb, and then just run away. Most of the time, we're going to see these jump pads during the solo campaign, during the challenges. We're going to be put in arenas where it's going to require some strategy and brain power and how are we going to use these jump pads to get to our goal. In some arenas, players are going to encounter these cracks. When a bomb explodes on the cracks, it becomes a hole. The reason why players need to be aware of this is because if we utilize the ultimates and move the bomb in that direction of the hole, the hole is going to act like a barrier and just stop there. In single player mode, there are 240 challenges for us to play and they're not easy. For example, me, I'm still on the first area in level 18. I still haven't completed that yet to the point where well I still want to play so I'm gonna go to multiplayer mode. In multiplayer mode we have a choice of playing three different matches. 32 player battle royale, 4v4 team knockout, and FFA wildcard. This is a random free for all mode where we can respawn. We have limitless life and the key of this is to kill as much as we can. In Team Knockout, the thing I want to point out that I found interesting was if we get knocked out from a bomb, we don't just die. We can actually respawn outside the arena and we are given the ability to throw our own bomb. So we've got to go around the arena and we just throw bombs hoping that it will activate and take out another player. Once we're able to take out that player, we can get back into the game. This makes it interesting because not only are we going to have to worry about the enemies inside the arena, we're going to have to worry about the ones at the perimeter too. In the 32 Battle Royale, once you're out, you're out. It's, it's done. And I never succeed in this section because there's just so many players in a tight space in the beginning of the match. I just want to throw bombs and they activate and I just do a suicide. When the game is progressing, they throw in these weights and it smashes the players. I got caught in one of them one time. After I die, it prompts me, do you want to quit? I'm like, yes, I want to quit. I just want to play on another match. I don't want to watch these people. And then it shows my stats, and I see how bad I did. And I was like, 
you know what? That's okay. I still got experience. So I'm going to rank up and get my rewards and customize my character as unique as possible without paying for anything. In single player mode, if we don't win that match, we don't get any experience. But in the multiplayer mode, even if we lose, we still get experience. The reason why we want to rank up is after we rank up, we can get rewards and get that ramanization rewards items to customize our avatar. And that's our Super Fina review of Blastone Tournament, developed by Victory Lap Games. Available on Steam and PlayStation 4. If you like this, don't forget to give us a like. And if you want to see more, subscribe and opt for our notifications on future uploads. If you also have any comments, questions, or opinions about this game, leave them in the comments below. I would love to hear what you say. We're also available on social media. Twitter and Instagram at Lehua Superfina. And we also stream games on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Lehua Superfina, where we stream on Tuesdays and Thursdays, 10.30 p.m. Hawaii time, and Saturdays, 9.30 a.m. Hawaii time. My name is Lehua, and this was our Superfina review of Blast Zone Tournament by Victory Lap Games, available on Steam and PlayStation 4. Thank you guys all for watching, and I hope to see you guys next time. Bye!